is this going to be video uh, for the host? I always want the host on. Uh, and I want the participants on too because we're going to be dealing with scouts and I want to be able to see their face. And I can plug this into my Google Calendar. Uh, I do have an Outlook Calendar as well, but that's more for uh, my organization my, that I work for. So I want to use my Google Calendar for scouting events. And what I do is I go ahead and schedule it and it's going to send me here. And it's going to ask me if I gave it permission. I'm going to allow it. It's going to bring up my Google Calendar. And then over here, it says guests. This is where you want to put in everybody that you want to invite to this meeting. So I'm just going to put, uh, let's see, Chris Felton. All right. And um, I can join, I have Google Meet on my Google. That is another thing that it, it does cost a little bit um, and it's another platform. We'll talk about that later. And then I can invite other guests if I want to. Right now, I'm just gonna send Chris's and Oh no. You guys don't want to see all my Gmail. That's not the way. Abby, you want to get it? I'll do it. It wants to send a, there we go. Thank you. And then I should be able to pull it all the way down. And that's when I'm having a little bit of problem. And then it should be able to send to Chris. Um, I want to save this. It's going to send and say that and send it. And Chris, you should be getting an e uh, email saying that there's a, a Zoom meeting coming your direction. <clears throat> Now, the one thing I love about Zoom, as you can see tonight, is it's really easy and uh, to use. And let me open this. I did up. receive the email. So. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm back on the scheduling for Zoom. And the reason why I'm back on there is because of this. It's a setting. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Okay, when you go into the meeting, you might want to go into full screen automatically because maybe you have a whole bunch of information or like the opening ceremony for your Cub Scout meeting. You might want to use that and have one person presenting the, the prayer, the pledge, and the Scout Oath and Law. Um, and then automatically copy invite link once the meeting starts. Uh, you can also have a remind me uh, on here five minutes before the meeting uh, is supposed to start. Like today, uh, even though the invite came from the main office, I was able to go in there and I wanted to alert myself, hey, in 30 minutes, I've got a Zoom meeting. Um, Stop my video and audio when my display is off or screensaver begins. Um, I, I wouldn't use that because then you have Cub Scouts <laughs> just go the other direction. Um, share screen, which Abby is sharing her screen with me right now. Um, and Abby, I'm gonna ask you to, I'm gonna stop sharing. And then I'm going to talk about some other things on this bar. All right. At the bottom of the bar, you have a mute. And uh, when they come in, if you uh, have them waiting in the waiting room, uh, you can automatically put the mute on. So when they enter the room, they're not, they're not talking. Um, the, the video, you can request that everybody who's coming into the room uh, has their video on. 
I know right now that I have 19 participants in this room and that's located at the bottom of the bar. Next to it is a chat bar. Now you can enable that or disable it uh, because sometimes, um, I'm sorry, Cub Scouts and even troop members are a little bit uh, more excited about typing messages back and forth than learning about what's going on <laughs> uh, while we're talking to them. You can record the meeting as well. Um, and then you have reactions. Uh, if you're trying to ask them a question and you need a response from them, you can have them raise their hands if they don't understand, or they can do thumbs up, hey, we understand, or if you don't get a response from that Cubs, hey, do you understand what's going on? Are there any questions right now? Lisa, I do want to point out too, um, which, I think I should have the ability to share my screen also. Um, oh, maybe not, okay. Anyways, um, the you guys can also set, we, she didn't really specify this, but we do need to specify that you do need to enable the waiting room with uh, per national rules when using Zoom content um, with right. the staff. So you need to have it set up and um, I don't know why it won't let me share my screen with this thing. Because right Abby's in, uh, Abby, yeah, are you? Because, it, well, I don't know. It doesn't even come up as an option for me to share, but that's fine. I don't know what's going on with that. But basically when you, you choose to schedule the meeting, like Lisa showed you, either there's a section on the bottom that says advanced settings, um, or I'm sorry, advanced options. You need to click on that. And then under there, there's four options. There's enable waiting room, enable join before host, um, mute participants upon entry and automatically record meeting um, on the local computer. So if you are planning to record your meetings, you can just automatically choose to have it recorded right when you guys start the meeting. Um, I would not recommend that. I would really recommend that you, um, you know, physically choose yourselves when you want to start recording. Um, you may not want to record that first five minutes of everybody coming in and, you know, talking amongst each other and all that fun stuff. Um, I do recommend, you know, muting participants upon entry. That's a good option to have just starting out just because then you are having all those families coming in. Um, they will be muted. You're not going to have a, you know, cacophony of sounds and stuff starting right off the bat. It'll be, it's a nice thing to go. And then obviously do not choose to have them to be able to join the call before the host gets on. You want them in that waiting room ahead of time because that is per national rules as far as Zoom content, just running a Zoom goes. You want them to be in a separate waiting room so that you guys as the unit leaders can decide if everybody that is in the waiting room is supposed to be there. Um, if you're seeing all the names that are on there and they, they make sense, you know those people. Um, but then again, some of them will be thrown off. I know, you know, me and Abby in our meetings that we've had in the past, some of the people that we know that are coming under these calls are actually um, under their child's name because their child is using their Zoom account for school and that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, I think like Becca Scott the other day was coming in under her child's name and we're like, who's this person? Like, why, why are they trying to get into the meeting 20 minutes early? We're like, why, you know, and then we realized, oh, it's probably her son, uh, her son that was using it. So it's under his name. Um, so just keep that in mind that, you know, it may be different. You may need to send an individual message to that person, make sure they are who they are. But for the most part, you generally know who the people that are getting into your Zoom call are. So you should be able to add them in easily enough. So just that would be my only two cents and all that fun stuff. And there are a couple of questions in the chat box right now. Uh, are there BSA rules for Zoom or other virtual meetings? Yes, there are. Especially if you're working with youth, you have to follow the youth protection guidelines. Um, and the youth protection guidelines are always, there's too deep leadership, no matter what you do in scouting. Um, and I also, I also tell uh, my, my leaders, uh, that your scouts should be looking at CyberChip because uh, there are a lot of guidelines for them that they can understand at their level. Um, and I thought we couldn't record meetings with minor scouts present. If the parents are present, I... Yeah, yeah that's the only difference is that if the parent, so, you know, for your PAC meetings anyways, the parent should at least be in the room um, no matter what. So, um, you know, that's sort of the way, as long as the parent can sense that it's okay, if, you know, they are recorded, that's fine. If they want to keep their, you know, um, video on, you know, shut down or like, you know, showing no video, that's fine too. Um, it's really up to the family's preference at that point. But 
Um, but yeah, if you, you can send out the email, you know, I know some of the units that I talk to, they, whenever they send out the invites for the zoom calls for their packs and stuff, they put it down there. FYI, like, you know, feel free to either turn on your video or not depending, but you know, we are going to record this session. So with your, if you have your video on, it is you consenting that yes, your child can be recorded. It's sort of like kind of how they're getting past that regulation. And that's pretty, that's something that's kind of new. We, we obviously as the council aren't really saying, yeah, like absolutely do this. You know, it's more something that has been happening and it's worked out pretty successfully so far. All right. I'm thinking the biggest reason why everybody's here is not really so much about the Zoom, but how do we do our program through Zoom or virtual? And there's so many different platforms out there. There's Facebook Live, there's YouTube, there's Zoom, there's, uh, try different ones. Um, but to start out your program, I've got some resources that, hey, uh, me and Grant were talking about them earlier today. They were kind of exciting. Pinterest is one, love Pinterest. Uh, let's see, right there. Just a second. I'm going to share you. All right. This piece can go away. And all right. All I did was virtual Cub Scout meetings. Now, a lot of these guys have been doing this for a while, and they are amazing programs. Um, here's one right here. Comes to how to run a virtual pack meeting. And what they did is gave you a whole bunch of information. And then I went to, where are you? There you are. I had fun with this one. Pinterest is my favorite friend. Um, it's a lot, a lot of times this is where I get a lot of my arts and crafts, especially for my Cub Scouts. Um, but there's like make virtual troop memories with these 50 fun ideals. There's uh, the beach bingo. And you can go through the den leader guide and pick out those things that the den leader is going to instruct. And yeah, the parents are going to have to do the background. Okay, like if they have to build a birdhouse or they have to take a bagel and uh, turn it into a bird feeder. You know, you can demonstrate that still through Zoom and they come back to the meeting the next time, hey, look what I created. Are there any questions? I can't see that. All right. Now, Jennifer's got something, and Jennifer, um, how do we make her the host for a minute? Um, they already did. Okay, so you're good. Okay, so um, we have had several Zoom PAC meetings and DIN meetings already, and um, deal with a Cub Scout pack, so sometimes keeping their interest is very challenging. Um, can you guys hear me okay before I get too far ahead of myself? Okay. So one thing, I'm just going to go through a couple things that we've done so far. I like to try to get their interest right off the bat. So we always start our meetings with, you know, the Pledge of Allegiance, the, the Oath and Law and all that. And then we go into something fun to get them engaged. Um, you'll notice my background. That's the Hogwarts castle. Um, one thing that we did that the kids really liked was if I'm the host, which I typically am, I will uh, we'll play a game where they have to guess where I'm at. So I'll switch my backgrounds around and then the kids will have to try to figure out what, what movie I'm in or where I'm at. And um, the kids really seem to like that. So that's something that we do just to get everybody interacting and kind of playing um, before we break out into our breakout rooms for our dens or whatnot. 
Um, something else that we did, <laughs> there's, there's my cup, Scott, right there. Go sit down. Um, something that we did actually yesterday was I created a game. It was a Cub Scout Jeopardy game. So I'm going to show you that really quickly. So this is Cub Scout Jeopardy. Um, and I made this, this is pretty generic. So just about any pack could use this. But we, we set up a couple teams and we had, um, I think it was five teams yesterday. So I'll just kind of show you guys really quickly how we do it. If you want to unmute, you can. What I had my kids do was, let's say we'll put Lisa and Abby in team number one. So I can change this to where um, it'll say, That way the kids know what team they're on and then we can, I'm just using the people that I see right here in front of me. So I'll put Jim and Chris in team number two. So I've got two teams and then um, I had my Cub Master just randomly pick a number between one and five because that's how many teams I had. So that, that team got to start. So we'll just play one or two really fast. Chris, go ahead and pick a category and a number for me. Um, let's do, gosh, what are things I actually know? Um, <laughs> uh, we'll do, uh, events for 400. Okay. So then I click on this. And so how you get to, so if you know the answer, what the kids would do would be type, type in the chat box. They don't have to type the answer. They just have to type a letter so that it shows up in order as who was fastest. So you could buy literally any letter you want and then whoever is the fastest. And I, I had someone else monitoring the chat box for me so I didn't have to try to do that. Well, there's my dad. <laughs> so it looks like Abby was the fastest. So then I would call on team one and let Abby answer. So what's the answer, Abby? BB guns and archery. Okay, so then we see if she's right. And I was dealing with Cub Scouts, so if they didn't say what is, we still gave them the point. <laughs> so what's really nice about this program is it does the math for you. So all I have to do is click yes, that she got it right, and then team one got it. So then she, since Abby got it right, she would get, get to pick the next category. Uh, Cub Scout basics for 200. So then again, we have to monitor the chat and see who has the fastest fingers. Oh, gosh dang it. And the Cub Scouts, <laughs> <laughs> my Cub Scouts person. really like this. They, they, liked, they liked being competitive. They liked playing and helping each other out. Um, is, and I have lost my chat box. So somebody have to tell me who was the fastest. I was, except that it went privately to Grant because he <laughs> 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 said <laughs> That's right, fine. Chris, Technically, it was, Dan, it was Dan Wasky. <laughs> All right, whoever. Dan, what's the answer? Buddy system. Yes. So you guys, you guys get the, the gist of it. So we'll give that one to this group. So nonetheless, that's that's how we played, and that the, the kids really liked it. Um, it got down to where we had three kids that were all tied, so it got super competitive there towards the end. Um, but it helped them learn. It helped them refresh some of the, you know, the things on here. This is pretty generic. I think there was one question that was a Pack 270 question, and yeah, it's this one. So that's the only one that is specific to our pack number, but you could edit that to your own pack number if you would choose to do something like this. And surely to goodness, everybody knows this answer. So that should be um, every pack's biggest fundraiser. Cough, cough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so this this was our game. It went over so so well that I'm going to make another one that's just specific to like leave no trace and outdoor ethics type of type of game. So. Um, 
we look forward to trying that again. So you can do this. What I did was I just Googled um, create my own Jeopardy game, but this is jeopardylabs.com. I will forward this link to Chris Felton. So um, let's see if I can get out of this here. So if I go to menu, um, what you can do is I'll share it. And then once he gets that email, it should ask you if you want to copy my game and then you can edit the copy. You won't be able to edit my game, but you'd have your own copy of it. So anyone can use it and um, as they wish. Cool. Abby, I have to say this. Grant responded with, that's what sabotage looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got me good. Okay, there is a question. Logistically, if you are the host and your kid wants to participate, they need to be logged onto a different account. That's, if he's referring to the game, then that's correct. Because um, my kid, I had to have my kid in another room so that he could participate in the chat. Because when you have that game logged on and pulled up, it's really hard to see the chat uh, when you're screen sharing. So I would encourage you to have a helper and have your child participating on a separate device. All right. I think now we need to hear from our participants uh, because you came here tonight looking for something and um, I guess the, the feedback that we need is, is this helping or how can we help you make a better program? Because I, the reason why you're here is because you're not meeting in person. Um, so what are some questions that you have? And you can unmute yourself. Uh, so Jim asked if a den leader has no connectivity at home and I have a conflict and can't host for them, is it okay for another parent in the den to host? Um, I mean, technically, yes. I, that wouldn't really be an issue. Um, I guess the biggest issue at that point would be that parent would need the information of what they should be doing. Um, I mean, they would kind of become the de, de facto den leader at that point. Um, but it would be no different than, you know, if, you know, in your den meeting, you guys in an in-person den meeting, you guys showed up and, um, you know, you provided the, you know, they, they had to take over the program anyways, you know, because if the den leader didn't show up, one of the parents would have to do it, um, you know, anyway. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Abby's probably right. They would also have to have youth protection. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah, and I mean, yeah. uh, this is something that I tell all my units. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're a leader or if they're a parent or if they're a grandparent, if they're visiting your unit, they should automatically have youth protection because they're going to be on those activities and you know, they're going to be there. Um, so I, I, when I had my unit, it, it was a requirement that everybody had to do youth protection at least once a year. Yeah. So, I mean, if you have people that don't have youth protection, I, I mean, it would sort of be a weird, I mean, honestly, I would just generally postpone maybe that den meeting for the week or something like that. But um, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, I don't really have a perfect answer for the, you know, for that. But ideally, that's what I would say is that if that other parent has youth protection, that'd be great. If not, then I would look at either postponing or finding a different day or something like that. Well, the grand question was the the den leader can sign in with a phone, but can't host a meeting. Oh, okay. You can call into the thing, then you would have the den leader actually leading the meeting, but somebody else doing the... Yeah, that's fine. Action. I mean, the biggest thing is that you just have the registered leader that's supposed to be there on the call in some way, shape, or form. But if they're just sharing the screen saying like, you know, here's physically what he's talking about, then yeah, that's fine. Cool. Uh, I had a question. This is Dan Nowakowski. Um, for those that are doing this, uh, are you doing it more for den meetings or PAC meetings? And if it is for PAC meetings, how are you handling uh, awards and items like that? 
if everything is virtual? That's a very good question. And um, you can still do the pack meeting and have all the the celebration and uh, but also getting the parents to buy into, hey, we're going to have a drive through. We're going to give you the awards and they might already have their awards before we get to the pack meeting or they might get them right after the pack meeting. Um, but doing the pack meeting virtual, it, it's it's not really changing much. Uh, it's just trying to physically get the awards. Um, you can mail them out to to the scouts as well. Yeah, I mean, there's you can look online. There's several different options that units have been doing. Like she said, the drive through is a you know good one. You choose a place somewhere in town. You know, maybe it's your local McDonald's or something like that, and you just have your families come there and pick up the stuff. And you say you're going to be there from this time to this time, and you know they show up. Um, or yeah, you can mail it out. That does obviously cost money. Clearly, you know, please put that on the pack expenses, not on your own. Um, if your pack can cover it. Um, but apart from that, it would be you, you would have to come up with some sort of system with your families that that would work successfully. Um, the other option I know one of my other units what they're doing is they're they're basically showing like here's what you guys are getting, and then you know they're waiting for you know one in person events almost more of like the uh, kind of like a court of honor kind of a thing that the troop level does where they're doing, you know, like when we can meet in, you know, a month and a half or so, we're going to give you all of the advancements we've earned for the last two months. And then that event that they're doing in person is very much a, obviously follows COVID guidelines and all that kind of stuff. And they're setting it up, you know, correctly in all those types of ways. Um, and then they just have that one single sort of hurrah event. And then they go back to having their normal pack meetings and such, you know, at normal times from there. Another way I've seen it done is we've had PACs who do their DIN meetings um, and they might do some PAC meetings virtually, but then they did their big award ceremony um, in a socially distanced way. So they went to the park behind ICAMP Scout Center. One person bought and distributed the awards while wearing a mask and gloves and the Cub Master also wearing a mask, stood six feet apart from everybody else and called out the scouts and what they had earned. So they stayed in their family units, they all stayed six feet apart, they all wore masks, but the kids still got to be celebrated and get their awards. Yeah, and now we're talking about the, the gloves is, is really good too. The ideal situation is that least amount of people touching the physical things we're giving the kids in, in every single part of our program right now. The, the least amount of physical holding on to those things the better so if it's by gloves or whatever that that's better for the kids in every way so that's just for all general things not just advancements so and then um, as far as pack meetings and den meetings go um, there are units that are doing separate den meetings on the side and stuff like that some um, packs though have been doing the process of they're creating breakout rooms with zoom for their full pack meeting so they'll come together as a full pack um, they'll have their beginning program and all that stuff, and then they'll break out into den meetings for, say, you know, 20, 30 minutes, and then they'll come back and to then do the, you know, uh, ending program together, and then, you know, they'll end the meeting. So, you know, you might start out with 20 minutes together in the beginning, 20 to 30 minutes apart towards the middle uh, to the end, and then a last 10 minute thing. Um, the breakout rooms, there are several YouTube videos you guys can check out, and I'll try to post them in the chat box. Um, they're, they're pretty simple to do and you can set them up so that they're pre set up. You can also set them up when they're in the call. So you may not know who's actually going to show up for that meeting. And so once everyone's in there, you can separate them out between, you know, if you want to separate them out by, you know, dens of age group, if you want to separate them by, um, I mean, boys and girls, I, you know, I don't know how you guys want to do it individually, but, um, you can set up as many, you know, uh, things as you want. You can set it up so that it'll tell them, Hey, you have, five minutes left or you have one minute left, you know, wrap up your activity or whatever you're doing. Um, there's a lot of options and there is a lot of really great um, support YouTube videos and stuff that either Zoom or people that are using Zoom have created that are very easy to follow. So I'll try to uh, post a couple in the chat box before the end of the meeting if I can find them. So. Another question that I've had come to me um, is what if your scouts 
or some of your scouts don't have internet access. So especially, I know in my district on that Evansville, Posey County line, um, not everybody has access to internet at home. And what we would suggest for that is you can still do scout meetings. It just looks a little different. You would decide what that DIN is going to do or that patrol, if you're with Scouts BSA, what they're going to do, do and distribute them the information, have them do it together or do it at home on one evening and then you can come back together on a phone call and talk about what they learned and what they did and how it went. There are services like freeconferencecall.com. Um, there's probably others out there that will allow you to set up a conference call number. Jim, that's a good question. Does the free version have the breakout rooms available? Uh, and I do not think they do. I know my version doesn't, so and it's a free version, but uh, the the next one up, um, it is a paid version. It's seventeen dollars a month, um, and it does have the breakout sessions. Plus, you can get up to a hundred participants in, in to one Zoom meeting. Um, so you. Well, and I'm going to check this to make sure. I'm, I'm actually sure you can do it in with the free version, but you can only activate it from the actual like web page version, not from like the app part of it. You have to go to the web page and activate it specifically, but I'm going to make sure that's correct. But I'm pretty sure you can do it even with the free account because I've done it before. And, you know, we have one council account that we pay for, but we, okay. when we were on the calls onto a council call like mine right now, I'm using my personal um, free version and I've used it before. So let me check on that and make sure and I'll send you guys sort of like how that works. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you. Correct. Go ahead. What I you was just saying Chris is correct. Okay. But just Chris? be aware that you're limited to only 40 minutes on the free account. And also if you you actually purchase the program if you pay by the year it's about five dollars a month cheaper because we did the whole year worth and, and it was only like 140 bucks so that knocked the price down quite a bit i'm going to share one more thing with you and this came from my district commissioner, it actually came to my email. There are uh, some new Cub Scout adventure video resources that are available and this came out to the commissioners. Um, this is just a whole bunch of different information. Did anybody get this this week from National? Yeah, uh, anyway, there are two uh, trainings that are gonna be offered August 31st and September 14th. Um, a lot of it's talking about scout book, but uh, on this uh, email, if you click here, no, nope, here, I wanna make sure I get the right one. It's gonna take you to this. Tips and tricks for virtual learning. And it's talking, and like I said, it's uh, videos and, uh, scout book hacks and different um, virtual resources that you can use to help with advancement and the program itself. Plus there are a lot of theme parks right now and a lot of zoos that are doing virtual. Um, if you can get them online and have them do the virtual zoos, have them do the virtual theme parks. Going through some of those caves are kind of cool too. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Abby. Any more questions? Hi, this is Katie Schunk. I've got a question that's not super virtual related, but we're trying to get the most bang for our buck whenever we have in-person events. And so is there some kind of resource where it says, you know, 
I've got all of my different age groups present. What am I going to need to do to have like a first responders event that knocks out as many requirements for each age group? Can you repeat that question? Yeah. I, I am so sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, so like if you wanted to have a first responders event, because that seems to hit a lot of different age requirements, is there some kind of template for an event that says, you know, make sure to have a fireman there that explains this, make sure to write thank you notes, this will hit the lions, this will hit the tigers, that, you know, that maps out the different requirements. Katie, privately send me your email. I will do that. Thank you. <laughs> I have something it's called tracks and it actually follows the adventures and it gives you a, a rundown of each adventure. Thank you. I mean, Lisa, if you can just, I mean, can you just post that in the chat? It might be helpful just to toss me out. How about I send it to you later and you can get it out to everybody? That would be awesome because it's, it's an actual resource that I give them during their leader specific training. Um, okay. Yeah. That's why you all should get your training on time. That's right. If you guys, if you guys want training from me, just let me know. <laughs> we'll do it virtually. I'll give you everything. And don't forget about our Scouting at Home webpage through Buffalo Trace Council. Um, so you just go to buffalotracecouncil.org, and it has a bunch of resources, 30-day challenges, um, tips on running a Zoom meeting. It has information about how another Cub Scout pack elsewhere in the country ran a virtual Pinewood Derby. So there's a bunch of information on there. We try to keep it pretty up to date, um, but if you find cool resources that aren't on there, please share them with me and I will put them on there. And remember that this doesn't have to be complicated. Like just out of curiosity, I picked up the Wolf book the other day and was looking through it and just looking through the council fire requirements, a lot of those are easily done virtually or in a socially distanced manner. Yeah, I know I had a lot of unit leaders that were calling me and they were sort of like freaking out about the idea of using Zoom. Honestly, this is going to make your life easier than it would be to plan a whole in-person event and all that kind of stuff. I was like doing Zoom, yeah, you have to, you know, figure out the whole virtual part too, but it's overall, it's, it's going to be a lot easier to physically run your programs um, for the time being. And um, hopefully, you know, it, it'll, it, once you do it the first time, you'll, you'll pick it up and it'll, you know, it'll almost be like clockwork from then on until we can finally start doing normal programs again, so. Uh, when you record a meeting, where does it go? It goes to an iCloud. And that recording is actually sent to your email And I will, like I'm recording this meeting for future um, questions, and I'm just going to save it onto my laptop when we're done. Don't share this with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to share this uh, because Abby did bring up a good point, and uh, I think it's a good idea to, to at least see it. Um, this is the Scouting at Home on Buffalo Trace Council. And... I have seen um, the 30 day challenge for the tigers, the wolf, the bear. Those are amazing. And they've got a six week challenge. Um, but, and even earning the hiking stick, you wouldn't think that you would be able to earn it at just doing a Zoom meeting, but yeah, you can, they can still hike uh, and getting them out and getting them active outdoors, you know, uh, with their families. Um, and then, of course, the cyber chip. Uh, and I, I push the cyber chip. <laughs> so um, you go to the main page of Buffalo Trace Council, and it talks about COVID-19, and then there's all these resources right here. And that's another good point too. If you guys do have in-person meetings of any form or anything like that, 
you guys really should go to the council page and get that pre-event medical checklist and, you know, go look over the reopening unit meeting protocols, all that kind of stuff. Um, you really should, every time you have an in-person event for the time being, you should have your families filling out this pre-event medical checklist and that kind of stuff. It's just one more layer of protection for all of us. Um, and it makes everything just a little bit more secure for everybody on every side. And it leads to making sure that you're not dealing with the issue of one of the kids ends up, you know, testing positive for COVID three days later, and he may not have gotten it at the unit, but you will have to spend the entire, you know, next day calling every single person in your uh, meeting that, hey, this person, you know, you may, or I'm sorry, you shouldn't say that this person has it. You should say, you know, there's a possibility you were exposed. Um, and you guys need to, you know, either be tested or, you know, spend your time in quarantine, that kind of stuff. Um, so in these checklists, let you know ahead of time that no, they didn't think they had symptoms, obviously like that. And it kind of deters people that if they're, um, you know, if you're going to do that in-person event, then it shouldn't, they should not be showing up if they are having symptoms and that kind of stuff. So, um, then it also provides you the opportunity to have, you know, the contact information of everybody so that they know. Um, you know, or you know who to call if something does come up and you do need to start making phone calls to people, so. Um. And to go off what Chris was talking about, if you do do an in-person event, you must take attendance and know who every single person who is in that building or per preferably not in a building, but at the park with you or wherever you are so that you can contact them if something happens. Yeah, I just did a training and I, I totally forgot about this form and they're like, here, you can't leave here until you fill this out. <laughs> um, Dave, I, you might have come in late. What we described earlier, and I, I should probably amend kind of what I said earlier. So no, scouts should not be recorded in general. Uh, <laughs> I talked about, you know, before, you know, you can kind of get away with it with parent, parental consent, but that's, you know, again, sort of a gray area. But for the most part, no, they should not be recorded. If you want to record the, the, the meeting you're doing or recording the, you know, maybe the program that you're running or that kind of stuff, that's fine. I mean, like you can see as we're talking, it's only recording the person that's talking and that kind of stuff. And while you're doing the presenting and everything, it shouldn't really, um, you know, as long as nobody is like jumping in and on top of you, which because they should be muted, it should just be recording your part. So if you want to have a video and post it on your PAC's Facebook page or something like that for the kids that missed that meeting and say, hey, here's the program we ran, feel free to do this at home um, or anything like that. You know, you can do that. It's just if you are, you know, going to go to, you know, having questions, having the, you know, uh, the, the scouts talk a lot and that kind of stuff. Yes, at that point, you would want to stop recording the video um, and, you know, allow that conversations and that kind of stuff to happen if they're asking questions about what's going on. But if you want to, you know, do the recording while you're doing the presentation for future reference, um, that that is okay, you know, as long as it's sort of on you and your, you know, unit leadership and not going to the scouts back and forth and that kind of stuff. If that all makes sense, because I, there is a there is a proponent and a you know bonus to having it recorded so that you do have it for the future. So. And Jennifer, you, you had a really good one. Uh, your biggest challenge is trying to get the scouts to attend. And um, that's going to be up to the scout leaders. You've got to pump them up. Uh, just like you guys coming here tonight, you know, I, I'm sure that everybody's had a really busy day. And from six to seven, we're going to go and listen to this video. But um, the admin team has been phenomenal trying to get this information out and trying to help. Uh, get your program up. If you get the parents buy-in and the kids to buy-in, then yeah, they're going to show up. Um, the best way to get the kids to buy-in though is have, or, or the youth to buy-in is to um, have the activities and hey, we're going to build this or what does this look like? I'm not sure what this is going to be when we get done with it, but this is what it's going to, you know, and, and then at the end, hey guys, we, we uh, like we built a, a robotics ca uh, car uh, or hey 
we learned today that, you know, uh, we can help the uh, outdoors by feeding the animals with uh, bagels and cream cheese and bird seed and creating those different things, but getting them interested by leaving open-ended questions and say, hey, I'm going to take this block of wood and I don't know what it's going to turn into and it could be a race car. It could be an A1 bottle. I've seen that. Yeah, I mean, if you can somehow filter in the idea of, you know, every single meeting, you know, maybe it's not the whole program you do, but maybe a section, you know, every one of these meetings, you have a little, you build something a little bit bigger and then you do the next part the next time. And then you maybe build up to a in-person event that you and your committee have been planning for a while and you have it all set up so that you're going to, you know, follow all the guidelines and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, whether it's a Pinewood Derby, like she said, if you, you know, you work on that little block of wood, you do a little part of it every single time. And then you say, hey, you know, you like at the end of it, just, you know, you guys do whatever you want as far as coloring or whatever you guys want. Um, and then you end up, they have, they don't even realize they have a Pinewood Derby car at the end. And then you're like, hey, we're going to have a Pinewood Derby um, next week. It's going to be at, you know, a park out here. Um, you know, and it's, you know, these are the guidelines we're going to be following. And then, you know, it's, it's not something where you're planning an in-person event. You have to deal with sanitizing everything every single time. Well, maybe you're just building up to that one event. And then not only are you getting the kids involved, but you're getting the parents involved um, into the project also. And those are, you know, and the racing and that kind of stuff is some of the best parts. You know, we have so many versions between the rain gutter regattas, the um, space derby is Pinewood Derby. I mean, even the, um, you know, the vegetable derbies. Uh, veg I know that doesn't have as many steps, obviously. You kind of just take the vegetable and put some wheels into it for the most part. But <laughs> at the same time, um, you know, if you get, hey, next time I want you guys to bring a vegetable and you guys have never done a vegetable derby before, those kids are going to be like, well, I really want to be on the next call to figure out what are we going to do with this vegetable? You know, what, what is the point of that? So, um, you know, it's those type of things that you don't have to give them the whole show, like the whole kick the boodle. You just give them that little bit to get them to come the next time. Um, and that's, you know, and then you, you know, you sell it to them as we're building up to an in-person event or you sell it to them as we're going to have this cool program, even if you do it virtually, um, you know, it's, you know, and that's what, you know, we're, we're not saying you can't do in-person events. It's just, you have to, it, they do take a lot more effort right now because of all the different guidelines and everything you have to follow. So. And even if you have that one scout that uh, their parents are like, no, absolutely not. We're just going to do it virtually. Maybe that parent can drop off their, their Pinewood Derby car or their activity and uh, whoever their den leader or cub master is, they can hype it up. Hey, <laughs> you know, Jason couldn't be here today, but guess what? He built this cool car and we're going to race it for him and loading it up on the track and making sure we get it videoed and making sure he's still a part of that. that That's the biggest thing is trying to make sure those scouts that, you know, uh, they can't be there in person, making sure that they still feel a part of the program. Uh, Randy, the cost, uh, I looked at it today and I can't even remember what the numbers were. Um, it's $25 as a new member joining fee, plus the prorated $66. Which um, is like, like 33 at this point now, or 32? Yeah. I think I have to look. 550 times seven months, $38 for August, and then it'll, so it's pretty much 550 a month from March, and then you count how many months you have. So it's August, September, October, November, December, January, February. So 550 times seven is your prorated fee plus the $25 new member joining fee. Uh, but what we were talking about earlier, engagement is the most important thing. The more fun you can make it, the more successful you will be. Um, get your, ask your parents to just come try it out. Come to this meeting and then have the kids get up, do jumping jacks. Uh, play a game with each other, do all the cool things that Lisa and Chris have been talking about, that engagement will pay off the most. Yeah, and there's plenty, like Jennifer had that great um, Jeopardy game. There's plenty of other things similar to that that don't take that much to set up um, that you guys can do also. And um, you can make it even almost a reoccurring thing in your those meetings, like, hey, for five minutes every single one of these means we're going to play this game as a pack and it 
you know, and maybe I know there's even like virtual monopoly games, which I know is a little bit beyond the Cub Scouts, but when it comes to the, you know, the troop level stuff, I know some of you guys are in here are troop level. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of those kind of things that you guys can find and do over zoom. Um, that is, uh, you know, it's pretty simple and you can just generally, you can just Google that kind of stuff. So. <clears throat> Jennifer, good point. Uh, too deep leadership. If you have a breakout session, uh, make sure that you still have that too deep leadership. I just brought it up because that happened to us uh, kind of learning the hard way. I had a leader that didn't show <laughs> or had connectivity issues on one of our Zoom meetings. And it was like, oh my gosh, now I have to redo all these rooms because I didn't have a female in the room that I needed a female in. And, you know, it's, it's, it can be a challenge. So definitely make sure you have that planned out be ahead of time. Yes, yeah, someone asked about um, a FAQ for youth protection specifically and really all the youth protection policies apply. They just apply online. So you should never be reaching out directly to a scout. I know with Cub Scouts, it's not so much of an issue, uh, but with Scouts BSA members, I can't tell you how many um, Eagle candidates I have who email me directly and they don't have a parent or a scout master copied on that email and that's against youth protection policies. Right. Um, so just make sure that every communication has a parent on it every Zoom or virtual call or phone call has 2D leadership. No one-on-one -on -one contact. Uh, and Dan, thank you for, for attending tonight. That, uh, it means a lot, it really does. Um, <clears throat> are there any more questions and, and I'm going to leave you with this, guys. If you have questions or you're not sure how, how to do something or you know, just losing that little spark, reach out to us. Um, there's a whole bunch of creative minds in this room. Uh, and reaching out to maybe another Cub Scout leader in a, in a different unit. They might be doing something that sounds, oh my gosh, that looks really fun. And I, I've learned more from all of you and have been able to share it with other uh, units. And thank you for that. Yeah, and keep in mind, I mean, our job is to help you guys as much as we physically can in any way, shape or form. Um, and it helps us for you guys to be more informed because then we're not, you know, dealing with like a million different questions all at the same time. It's much easier for you guys to get on these trainings we all do at one time. And then it's, it's much easier. So no, thank you guys for joining on these things. And we, we really do appreciate it. We uh, appreciate your time as much as anything. Um, and then, you know, and again, I shouldn't say that we don't appreciate if you guys have questions, give us a call. Um, I would much rather answer your guys' questions over phone calls and stuff like that than you guys have to deal with them 10 seconds before your meeting is supposed to be starting because you're realizing, oh my gosh, I don't know the answer to this. Feel free to give us a call ahead of time and, and work out, um, you know, and, and make sure you have every, all your bases covered. You know, we want to be there to help you guys in any, every single way um, to make, you know, make your meetings as successful. Because if your meetings are successful, we look good in our job. So, um, you know, we don't get to say that enough, but, you know, it's uh, as long as your meetings go well, then we look good. So it's, it's important for us for you guys to have good meetings. So. And remember, uh, the 10th of September roundtable is, in some areas, it's virtual, as far as I know. I know Lincoln Heritage, we will be virtual, so look for those uh, <laughs> emails coming out. Bring those questions to the roundtable, because that's where your commissioners and some of your chairs are, and they're going to help you as much as they can. Two other events to keep in mind, which will help you provide virtual programming to your scouts is the Family Fun Fest hosted by National. And that's on September 12th. And you can just go to scouting.org slash Family Fun Fest and sign up or find the information about it. And September 19th is Cub Scout Fall Fun Day. Um, do make sure you sign up for that early because we have a box of materials that must be shipped out to all the scouts so that they can participate. And now I must be there. 
because there's a box of stuff coming. <laughs> Uh, it costs ten dollars, Jennifer. Um, ten dollars per scout, and it provides about um, I think we're at like four to five hours of programming for that day. So, and it's it's pretty cool stuff, guys. I really um, I wouldn't be you know gushing about it as much as I, I would be, but it, it is uh, yeah, it's got some really good stuff. Samantha Taylor and Fred Hassman and those guys they they did a great job putting it together. Um, there's a whole committee of people that yeah, it would take me a little bit to say it all, but there's a lot of really cool STEM programs in it that the kids will love. Um, they get to like create a whole like molded thing and then they get to look at it and it's going to be, oh, it's going to be so much fun. They're going to love it. They're going to build paper rockets and extract DNA from fruit and it's going to be really awesome. Oh, I'm so going to be there now. Yeah. I mean, I kind of <laughs> want to get one for myself a little bit, so yeah. <laughs> Can, can I purchase one for myself? I'll play. <laughs> and if you guys want to discuss, like, if your unit wants to bulk buy a bunch of them, um, you know, talk to us and we can get that worked out. You know, if we need to get them delivered up to you guys or however we need to do that. Um, we do have a distribution sites. Um, it's in the registration. We're going to do one in Albion um, for the Illinois units. And then we're going to do one in Jasper. And then I am looking into a place probably in Vincennes for my units. Um, as sort of distribution. So if you guys order a bunch of boxes for your units, um, depending on where you are, um, you guys can go to those distribution dates. And it should be the Saturday ahead of the event. Um, and they'll be there. I think they're looking at 12 to 2 um, in certain locations. I think for Albion, it's the McDonald's that's there. Um, Jasper, it's going to be the Wendy's that is at 231 and 64. Um, for Lincoln Heritage District, and then for my district, I'm, again, I'm, we're looking into an idea of somewhere in Vincent's, probably like the um, Hart Street McDonald's also or something like that. Um, and then that way you guys don't have to pay the shipping cost for the boxes. You can just come to those places and pick them up instead of, because um, the shipping cost, I think it's roughly about eight bucks per box. Um, so it would add obviously a little bit extra to it, but that's really just what it costs for us to do that. Um, that way, if you guys, you know, want to come get them and you don't have to pay the shipping, then it should be pretty close to you in comparison to you guys all having to come to Evansville and get them from the iCamp Center. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're hoping to have those opportunities for you. Well, it is now time. And I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Um, if you, uh, again, if you have any questions, there's Grant, there's Chris, there's Abby, and uh, you can email me uh, anytime. Uh, you can find me under the Lincoln Heritage uh, District page. Uh, again, my name is Lisa Barber and have an enjoyable evening, guys. Hope to see you in September and good luck on your recruitment. For those last couple of questions in, um, Jennifer, it's on September 19th um, in the afternoon. And Dave, I, I don't know. That'll be an Abby question. I don't know when the Mayor Betch stuff is going out. It's going out tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. Oh, thank you guys so much. Chris.